Hey everybody, I'm Kat, Community and Engagement Manager for Lean Agile Global 2021. In the lead up to the live virtual conference on 24th and 25th May, um, I will be introducing you to some of the fantastic speakers that we have in our upcoming lineup. Today, I am delighted to introduce you to Sathpal Singh, founder, coach, visual storyteller, and community organizer at Nija Unlimited. Welcome, Sath. Delighted to have you here. Hey, Kat. Great to be here. Awesome. I'm really excited. You know, your energy and passion for the industry is something that Jose has uh, really talked about a lot. And I'm excited to, to kind of talk to you about that today. Um, to get started, um, I prepared five questions for you. And the first one is, how would you describe yourself in a single tweet? Oh, wow. Tweet. <laughs> wow, I've got 140 characters. I, I, I'm a lover of powerful conversations, uh, thriving communities, and opportunities for all. So really, yeah, I'm always trying to embrace the journey that's life. It might sound cliched. I love sharing, caring, listening as best I can. And I'm definitely a work in progress. Yeah, love that. Oh, I love that. I, I really appreciate when people have enough self-awareness to identify that they're a work in progress. You know, there's always change. There's always growth. You know, I'm sure this year for many people has really proven that we're not at the end of our story. If anything, it's just beginning. Yep, 100%. Yep, we're learning about ourselves all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, amazing. So um, speaking more towards the conference then, in your opinion, why should people come and join us virtually at Lean Agile Global this year? Yeah, so so I've been lucky enough. So you mentioned Jose. So, so I've known Jose for a good few years. And I've also been fortunate enough to have been involved in helping organize and support uh, LLKD, which is what, what, what Lean Agile Global previously was in, in, in previous years. And Honestly, it has been some of the best conference experience I've ever had. You know, it's such a great community, such a welcoming community, and you learn so much stuff. Uh, and yeah, I love coming back. And it's ninth year, right? Yes. Ninth yes, year, so ninth going from year. strength to strength. And, you know, I, I fully expect this will be the best year ever. Oh, awesome. I'd love to hear that. Yeah. Ninth year, second year virtual. Um, last year, you know, it was very suddenly virtual. So it was a bit of a whirlwind for everyone involved, but we're really excited about the lineup that we've developed this year and, you know, all the amazing speakers from across the world that are just going to bring those different thoughts and different mindsets um, to the community to, to just discuss about. So we're really looking forward to it. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, you know, one of the things that we've talked about a lot in the lead up to the conference is diversity and inclusion. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that we really wanted to focus on, not only this year, but really a, as much as we could this year, was that we want uh, LAG to be a diverse and inclusive conference. So from your perspective, I would love to know, what does that mean to you? That's always a big question. Um, <laughs> It means lots of things, doesn't it? But in the main, for me, I mean, diversity is about learning from people from all walks of life. Uh, and inclusion is about celebrating difference uh, and not seeing it as an issue. And, and at the end of the day, there's more that we have in common with one another than, than that, that, that makes us different. Uh, and my recent experience in Agile 20 Reflect Festival from from February, where you know we were also very kind of focused on diversity and inclusion, was that I can't overstate the fact that it is really wonderful when you see humanity coming together around the sh shared values and a common purpose. Yeah, I love I love that kind of statement. You know, having the world come together and just uh, and as you said understanding that we're more similar than we are different um, because it's it's really it's really true you know I moved from Canada to England um, to, uh, three years ago and I had never been to Europe before and I've now traveled a lot around Europe and um, and just meeting all these people and listening to their stories and hearing about their childhood how they've grown up the jobs they have I'm like well, it, that kind of sounds very similar to me. You know, it sounds like experiences that I can completely understand and, you know, relate to. And I, and I would have never known that without the opportunity of meeting people across the world. So especially this year with so much going virtually, we really have had the ability to connect with people we would have never met otherwise. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Never were a true word spoken. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> 
Awesome. Um, so um, speaking of your talk, then, um, I, I know that um, we actually haven't um, discussed your talk just yet, because um, I know that you're playing around with a couple of ideas. But um, what are you thinking for your talk? Why should people come and, and listen to you at the conference? OK, so, yeah, good question. <laughs> so, so, so Lean Agile Global, so, so as, as we said, I, I've been a few times and I've, you know, I've, I've worked with Jose and this is the first time I'm ever going to be a speaker at, at, at Lean Agile Global and I very much feel like a new voice. So a lot of the other speakers, I've got an amazing list of speakers, many of these people I know, you know I've, I've worked with them, I've seen them talk before and it feels incredible to be in such company. Um, it really, truly does. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the for, for the opportunity. And over the last few years, I, I've become ever increasingly more passionate and involved in sort of community building, um, visual thinking, storytelling, and social leadership. Uh, and we live in the social age. Uh, and my talk is going to be about me sharing aspects of that journey and talking about the role and power of social leadership. Oh, I love that. That's such an interesting topic. And as you said, especially right now, we do live in a very social age. And so, you know, I'm very excited to learn what does social leadership truly mean and what's, you know, what that entails. Um, I would, I would love to learn more about that. So really exciting. Great. That's, that's, that's my plan. Yes, good. <laughs> and of course, plans change. Who knows what's going to happen a month down the line, right? <laughs> 100%. Awesome. Um, so a final question for you, um, you know, maybe a bit more personally than professionally, but after mm. COVID has settled down, what are you most looking forward to getting back out and doing? Yeah, I'm sure everybody's thinking about that. Um, I think the first thing I'd say is it's, it's, it's COVID had taken away life's little pleasures and things that I think I felt that many of us did that we'd perhaps taken for granted. That's probably the first thing I would say. Second thing is, unfortunately, as, 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 as you, you're now aware, I, I, I've recently suffered a personal loss myself, um, just of recent days with the death of my brother-in-law, who sadly um, 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 had COVID. Um, so, you know, I can feel the, the heartache that I can personally now feel the heartache that many others have, have experienced the, the impact of the global pandemic. So I think for me, when you know, things settle down and we can get back to kind of some sort of sense of normality. I think I'm simply going to enjoy sitting with friends and family and, and, and just sitting and chatting and reflecting and thinking about what the last 12 months has taught us and what we've learned from it. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate what you said about the, the the fact that they've kind of taken away simple pleasures, you know, things that things that you you never would have thought weren't going to be a part of your everyday. And for me, um, you know, being being Canadian and being very high energy and high personality, I, I like I love to hug people. And, you know, friends, strangers, someone that I met for the first time, I'm not the person to go in for a handshake, I'm the person to go in for a hug. And, um, and for me, you know, I, 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 when I've started um, seeing people outside, um, you know, England now has started releasing measures a little bit and we're able to go see people outside yeah. and starting to go to pubs and restaurants on the patios and such. And when I go up to people, I go up with big open arms and then I have to slightly retract because I'm like, oh, I actually don't know if I'm allowed to hug you. And even if I am, I'm not sure if you're comfortable with that. And, you know, it's just such a simple thing that was a big part of my life that now I really have to, to think about and consider because I, you know, it, especially for me, it might not be something that they're comfortable with at this point. And, you know, so my big arms have to get really small. <laughs> no, no, you, you, you know, you, you just made the valid point there. I, I think the simple things had become infinitely more complicated. And that was it. I mean, even think about, you know, when we used to go to the shops, all the things we did, the queuing, the standing, waiting for others before you could go and pick up your pint of milk and everything that we just never gave any thought to in the past suddenly required lots more consideration and you know I look forward to a time where you know we don't have to quite behave in that way but I think we have to also be honest and say this is probably going to stay with us and you know it's going to adjust the way we live and work and we've seen a lot of that and that's just how it's going to be but I think as time goes on we'll get better at living with it 
Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, one that I've seen, um, which is quite visual, which is why I, I keep catching on to it, is when I'm um, down um, in the tube in the underground and um, we're on the we're going up to the escalators and there's, you know, people waiting to get onto the escalator because everyone is waiting to be three steps apart from each other, which of course is, is correct and that's social distancing. And it's really wonderful that people are following that. But it's funny because before, you know, you'd be up against someone's back. <laughs> And you, it, you, right? you like sardines. <laughs> yeah, and you wouldn't have even thought, but now that's such a simple, simple thing that everyone has to take that slight bit of extra consideration. So it's definitely going to be different as people have been saying the new normal, getting back to normal with these new slight changes. But I'm looking personally, I'm just looking forward to, to getting outdoors and being able to, to pop on a train and go for a hike or a walk somewhere, not feeling guilty about the fact that I've gotten on a train. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. No, getting back to getting back to the basics and just enjoying life's little pleasures is, is, is kind of what I think most of us want to be. Yes, absolutely. Well, amazing. Thank you so much, Seth. I really appreciate your, your time today and, you know, taking the time out of your day to talk about the conference and what we're all kind of looking forward to. So I do hope that uh, many people will come to your talk to hear you speak about social leadership and the social age that we're in. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Fantastic. Great chat. Really enjoyed it and very much looking forward to the conference. Can't wait. Good. Thank you. Talk soon. Great. Thanks.